Hello everyone, this is Lunar, back with another video. I was wanting to make this video two weeks ago, but I didn't find the time. Today is a review of book 15, so if you haven't read the book, I recommend you click off now. Without further ado, let's get into the video. First off, my opinion on the book itself. The book, it wasn't bad by any means, but like, it felt way too anticlimactic and wrapped up subparly. Kind of lackluster if you get my drift. And the mudwings, Chewie! What about the mudwings? Really, my biggest problem with this book is just how many plot threads it left hanging. I guess that makes for good fanfics, but I don't know. It seems kind of lackluster in my opinion. Now that that little bit is over, let's talk about Luna as a protagonist. I like the way Tui went with her character, but it feels like she had some inner depression that never got resolved in the end. It kind of just flickered out of existence in the end as if it never happened. Although, <laughs> her little memories with Swordtail, like the memory of my mind words, those were some of my favorite parts. Finally, on the list of character critique, I want to talk about Dusky. I love the sweet little Silkwing, but it sort of seems like he was just shoved in there for plot convenience. I mean, like, Luna just met him, and then he got tossed down the hole with Vol. So, like, I feel like that would have he should have been introduced sooner, is what I'm saying. In the beginning of the book, it shows Luna, Cricket, Sundu, Moon, Kibli, Tsunami, Pineapple, Lynx, and Sky all flying across the ocean to the last continent using Clearsight's map. Then, as all of them are flying, they decide to use the Gift of Stealth on their next rest stop as they are nearing the continent. So they go to the next island, and Pineapple is the first one there, and they hear him start screaming. Sandu turns everyone invisible as they are being attacked by hive wings. This is one of the bigger problems I have with the book, because first of all, how did the hive wings find the trail of islands? Second of all, I think they would be too shocked by the fact that there are odd dragons to attack first. In the fight, Tsunami, Pineapple, and Kibli all get captured in the process of fighting the Hive Wings. And then a Silkwing comes onto the scene, controlled by Cotton Mouth and Freedom. So, they're about to catch Luna, and then Moon uses her fire and they capture her instead. Personally, this is another pet peeve of mine because I think it would have been funnier if they paraded Moon around like the second coming of Clearsight. Lynx and Sundu go off to save the others while Luna, Cricket, Sky, and Bullfrog all stay behind and Luna rants about how she doesn't trust Cricket even though it has been established at this point that she should trust her since Blue trusts her. Soon after, all the dragons left behind get reappeared and they take it as a sign from Sundu that they should continue on to the abyss without her. So then, they find this scavenger, or human, named Axolotl, who offers to take them to the village that worships the abyss. So, while in the caves, they run into the dragon refugees that are hiding down there. And this is when Luna meets Dusky, aka Plot Convenience Dragonette. Basically, the plot just goes down from here, with Dusky getting kidnapped by Vol and being flung down the abyss. Luna follows after, and that is where she meets Freedom and Cottonmouth after seeing the history of the Scorching. Honestly, I really like Freedom as a character, but I think the writers did her dirty in this book. She was forced to give up her very existence just because they couldn't find a better excuse. Basically, Freedom, she didn't deserve to go. 
is what I'm saying. The point of me saying this is Freedom never sacrificed anything. You would think at the end of book 15, oh, this is such a great thing this character did by sacrificing everything. Then you realize the story would be the same even if she wasn't there. There wasn't anything she gave up because she had nothing. Her life was taken away. She had her mother taken away. The moment Freedom was born, she had nothing. Then she had to go on with a miserable existence for 5,000 years. She didn't sacrifice anything because she had nothing to sacrifice other than a worthless existence. That's why they did her dirty. She needs to have trials, tribuli tribulation. Yeah. She needs to find happiness. So all I'm doing is saying they did her dirty. They should have at least given her a chance at life. Somehow. This drags on for multiple chapters. Tsunami, Kibli, and Pineapple escape while Luna is trapped in the abyss. Eventually, she gains Freedom's trust, and Freedom tells her how to kill the breath of evil. We're sacrificing her worthless existence for a greater cause, which is terrible. Anyway, this has been my book 15 review. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want more content and reviews like this. This is Luna saying bye bye and go brush your teeth.